I'm Chelsea Brandrick and this is my video cast for Unit 57 and I will be talking about war and documentary photography. War photography involves capturing armed conflict and its effects on people and places. Once photography was invented in the 1830s, people began to explore different subject matters. And as the Crimean War approached, many photographers experimented with photography to capture the historic event. As early photographers were not able to take moving images, they recorded more stationary aspects of the war, such as the soldiers in land before and after battle, along with a recreation of action scenes. And in order to produce a photograph, the subject had to be still for many minutes, so they were posed to be comfortable and involve minimal movement. Josh McCosh was a surgeon in the Bengal army and is considered to be the first war photographer known by name. He photographed the Second Anglo-Sikh War from 1848 to 1849 and his shots consisted of portraits of fellow officers, key figures in campaigns and the weaponry the army had available. Camera equipment was big, heavy and bulky so although the photographers were non-combatant they still made themselves an easy target to the enemy and some photographers have been killed trying to take their pictures despite them being protected by international conventions of armed warfare, as often they are killed to make a statement. Even though today's photography equipment is less bulky and easier to carry, the job is still very dangerous. For example, in the Iraq War, 36 photographers and camera operators were abducted or killed during the six-year conflict from 2003 to 2009. War photos can also be beneficial for prosecuting war criminals once the war has ended. Frank Iring created a photo exhibition about war crimes which focused on the belongings of the victims and were later used as evidence by the International Criminal Tribunal. The impact of war photography tends to be more emotional throughout nations and difficult to measure. It eliminates the possibility of naivety and forces us to acknowledge how terrible war truly is. This causes more general protests to war acts and possibly makes countries and their people less likely to jump to war as a conclusion. Mike Kemba is an American war photographer that has been travelling around the world capturing conflict since 1986. He's been to Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Sudan, Haiti and Israel. Mike has worked as a freelance photographer and sold his work to national newspapers in the United States and the United Kingdom, such as Daily Mirror, The Washington Post, New York Times and The Guardian. He is now under contract to The New York Times, one of America's best-selling newspapers. Mike has also created many exhibitions in America to display his work. A famous example is the Altered Images, where he released 150 years worth of before and after war photos that had been faked and manipulated digitally or staged. The purpose of Mike's photography is to inform his audience about the reality of war and how it affects people, as he believes it's important not to alter the photos as it wouldn't be a fair or ethically right to change the reality of history. Mike's photographs are very real and show the humanity in war while still being very personal and direct. Many of his images feature the residents he has encountered whilst photographing the war. This enables the viewer to see the impact the war is having on the innocent people that live there. And his other photos are raw accounts of bombings, raids, fighting, and the effect the war has had on the soldiers fighting. All of his photos are gripping and moving, which is the sign of a good photographer. And I think that as his photos are published by major newspapers, Mike is achieving his goal of informing and educating a mass audience about the effects and the reality of a war. Documentary photography refers to a popular form used to chronicle events or environments significant and relevant to history or historical events as well as everyday life. Documentary photography soon followed war photography in the 1850s when archaeologists travelled out to Egypt to capture the ruins and the wilderness of the East. New technology and subject matter shifted documentary photography from landscapes to cities and began to focus more on people. Jacob Rees was a police reporter for the New York Tribune newspaper in the early 1880s and reported the city's Lower East Side slums with his own photographs and became known as one of the city's most important social reformers. In 1900, Alice Harries travelled to the Congo Free State with her husband and photographed the Belgian atrocities against local people with a Kodak. The images were widely distributed and were critical in changing public perceptions of slavery. In the 1970s, many critics attacked the style of documentary photography that was being produced, which created a new documentary style that was philosophically more rigorous and much more left-wing in its politics. Since the 1970s, the decline of magazine published photos reduced the amount of documentary photography being distributed and viewed. 
Many photographers focused on the art world and galleries to present their work and to make a living. Traditional documentary photography has found a place in dedicated photography galleries along other artists working in painting, sculptures and modern media. John Topham was an English social documentary photographer who worked from 1927 to 1973, documenting the ordinary way of ordinary people and focus on the little things in life. He is noted for his photographs taken during the Second World War era, with some appearing in Popular Life magazine, and one is currently on display in the Imperial War Museum. The top photo collection holds over 125,000 of his pictures and displays them in, to the public in expeditions and galleries. Topham was working as a policeman in the east end of London in the 1920s and started to carry around a camera with him, capturing daily life on the beat. The photograph of Mary Smith, a knocker-up, was his first published photograph. John sold it for £5, which was the equivalent of a week's wages, to the Daily Mirror newspaper and decided to become a freelance photographer. During the early part of the war, Topham had a contract with Life magazine as well as being a freelance photographer and he would regularly get calls from national newspapers directing him to, to photograph areas of war damage or action. His most famous image is showing children watching the aerial fights in the Battle of Britain and this shot has been used in a propaganda campaign which helped convince millions of Americans to join the war against Germany. In 2009, the image was used to publicise Outbreak, a major Imperial War Museum exhibition commemorating 70 years since the start of World War II. The purpose of John Topham's photography is to entertain the viewer and promote the impact war was having on the public of England during the Second World War, in the hopes that it would end the conflict. His photographs are very real and very personal, and they transport you to the scene, and you can feel the atmosphere and the characters of the people in the photo just by looking at them, which is engaging and entertaining for the audience. The shot's perfect capture humanity in everyday life and they show how England coped and carried on during the war which is remarkable to document in history. Documentary photography is often used to expose society's evils and to make a positive change and as John's photos help sign up millions of Americans who helped the UK win the war and he entertained the nation throughout newspapers, Topham achieved a lot more during his 50-year career as a documentary photographer. Both photographers have sold their images to major newspapers and publications as it is the best way to earn a living and also reach a large audience. Showing photos in a gallery can be a good way to show the public a selection of work that may not be appropriate to publish in a newspaper, for example Mike Camber's Altered Images exhibition. War photography can show the negative sides to an event whilst documentary photography can show the positive way people are dealing with situations and events. I don't think one type of photography is better than the other and I think they are both both necessary to help tell history and document historical events as well as show both sides to the story.